What if I told you that the GOC, the Global Occult Coalition, a subsidiary, for lack of a better way to put it, of the United Nations, is a tool of the oppressor to keep people down? Well, let's put away our anarchist books for just a second and talk about that. Hi. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today we're going to cover my opinions on the GOC, and it's how it's, I think, a little bit more evil than the SCP Foundation. Oh, and that's not just because it destroys things instead of putting them into boxes for forever. See, when oppressors generally have to oppress, sometimes they don't even know they're doing it, right? The SCP Foundation is the best example of that. Go back to suffragettes in almost any Western democracy, and you'll find them being put into asylums. The idea that a woman might think that her opinion is the same as a man's is ridiculous, to the point of insanity. Uh, involuntary commitment to asylums is actually its own whole thing, but the SCP Foundation kind of does that with anomalies. An anomaly doesn't know that it's anomalous. It just is what it is. It wants to act in its natural state. And the SCP Foundation is like, hey, you know what we could do instead is just put you in a box so no one ever has to deal with you except for us. The early SCP Foundation, and I've talked about this in other videos, the early SCP Foundation is shaped by post 9-11 politics. The 2000s to 2008 time period was quite terrifying for everyone. And one thing that we have come to learn, and, and this is, by the way, important to realize that 2008 was 14 years ago, and 2007 was 15 years ago. So the first SCP ever was written 15 full years ago. The person who wrote it, I'm going to bet, was pretty young at the time. The people who founded the SCP Foundation wiki were pretty young at the time. And you can see that colored in their sort of... Um, well, not everyone's li was like this, but you can sort of see it colored in the margins, the tactical nature of MTFs, the GOC uh, offshoot wikis, the chaos insurgency and how cool all their weapons and gear were. You can kind of see the edgy teenager in it. And those people grew up and their opinions changed and their politics changed, I think. But it's not the it wouldn't be the first time that a collection of edgy teenagers have gotten together and said, hey, you know what? We're seriously oppressed, and I feel like that needs to be reflected in the fiction that I create. Wrongly, by the way. Um, and what they did was they created tools to preserve the status quo, because for them, the mass majority of them, the status quo was a positive at the time. You know, I'm looking forward to college and being like, oh my god, opportunities that belong to me are being given to somebody else. That's unfair. The sort of seeing which way the wind is blowing not liking it, but not thinking about where the wind came from. And the SCP Foundation's origins, I feel, strongly are influenced by those sorts of think that sort of thinking. No more so than the GOC. See, every one of the earliest GOIs, the SCP Foundation itself, as I was just explaining, is what it is. And all of the, I'd say the four major early GOIs would be the Chaos Insurgency, the GOC, Marshall Carter and Dark, and the Serpent's Hand. I think that would be fair. And it would also be fair to say that both the Chaos Insurgency and to some extent the GOC have kind of fallen by the wayside as uh, popular GOIs on the SCP Wiki. But, and in their place there come a plethora of other ones that meet wholly other, that, that basically have wholly other uh, origins and uh, politics that they espouse. But the original four really are just reflections on the SCP Foundation. It's like, what if the SCP Foundation, but, so um, Marshall Carter and Dark, what if the SCP Foundation was exactly the same, except it focused on profits? Uh, for the Serpent's Hand, what if the SCP Foundation uh, had its values all completely flipped except for the pursuit of knowledge? Um, for the <clears throat> Chaos Insurgency, what if the SCP Foundation was exactly the same, but was out for its own, ex explicitly out for its own betterment and empowerment? And the GOC, what if the SCP Foundation didn't care to learn about what makes anomalies tick? And each one of these is, as I said, just a reflection of how the SCP Foundation functions. The GOC, though, 
really, like I said, really dives into that because the GOC is, we were talking earlier about how Western democracies, and we're going to use suffragettes because it's the easiest example that I'm absolutely certain I don't need to actually give you full on examples of. Suffragettes were put into asylums. The idea that they would want equality was insane to the powers that be. They were anomalies that needed to be fixed. In Western democracy, that's what happens. In non-democratic systems, they do what the GOC does. They just kill the people who come up with these wild and crazy ideas of equality. That doesn't mean that the Western democracies are better, by the way. The in <clears throat> death of self sort of stuff that happens inside some of those asylums is ridiculously bad, and that is its own thing to talk about. So I'm not I'm not trying to compare uh, Western democracies to dictatorial, authoritarian, dictatorial, whatever you want to call it, regimes, and say that you know Western democracies handled their growing pains better. They really didn't. Like just a skosh. They didn't kill people. Well, I mean, unless you count the death of self by doing brain surgeries on people, which is killing them. Some people not I mean, it, brain surgeries are not killing people, but some of the brain surgeries that they were doing essentially killed the person and just left a husk. This is kind of and this is getting going to get uh, a little bit deeper and darker than I was hoping for. But the important part to remember here is that while the foundation incidentally helps preserve the status quo, like their mission statement, their everything sort of preserves the status quo. The GOC explicitly, not implicitly, not incidentally, not tangentially, they specifically are focused on preserving the status quo. And by the way, I'm not going to put an image of the GOC logo on the screen because the UN is very litigious. And I think there's like a 25% chance that they'll eventually ask if the wiki becomes popular enough that they'll actually ask the wiki to take down the GOC logo or at least remove any UN imagery from it. Whether that request is valid or not, it's neither here nor there. I just don't want to have to deal with it. So <laughs> um, the point is, <clears throat> yes, the UN, by the way, yes, the UN logo is copyrighted, believe it or not. It's not, it's not public domain. It's not creative Commons. It's a fully copyrighted and protected by lawyers. If you want to <laughs> So maybe the maybe the actual UN is a little bit of a and it is actually in, in a sense a tool of authoritarianism, uh, because the UN is made up of many member states, some of them democracies, some of them not. It espouses democratic values, sure, but how often do you see the UN doing completely non -democ undemocratic things and being like, ha ha, the UN isn't fulfilling it, but it is. Two of the five uh, UN Security Council members are not functional democracies. Like you could say Russia was a functional democracy for not even a functional democracy, but a struggling real democracy in the 90s ish. But since the mid 2000s, for sure, it hasn't been a democracy since then. And obviously China isn't. And that's I don't know if that's I was going to say that's fine. I don't know if that's fine, but it is what it is. Um, and that's just representation on the Security Council. Like we talk about the entirety of. I mean, there's dictators aplenty and communism aplenty. And then like sort of semi like they're technically democracies, but they're not all throughout the U.N. And the U.N. is charged with <clears throat> keeping the peace. But in the end, keeping the peace means appeasing people, countries like Russia or Russia, countries like China and it, it doesn't take very much. And I actually come, I pose this as a th theoretical story at some point. It doesn't take very much to imagine a pro-democracy activist in, let's say, Russia, not China, uh, in this particular case, because I think it's a little bit more salient to the current events that are going on. But it, it wouldn't take very much to imagine a pro-democracy activist in Russia who's arrested uh in, in the current situations and being arrested and put in jail. But I mean, if you wanted to, you could claim that they have this anomalous ability to convince people that the regime in power is bad. I mean, they, they must be anomalous because look, we only want what's best for our country. And they, and the people in power really believe that that's the problem with this. That's the issue with, with enforcing a, normalcy of sorts. The people in power 
think that what they're doing is right. So anyone who comes along and says <clears throat> elsewise is opposing what is right in their minds. And at the same time, how are you able to convince people that we're not best for this country? There must be something anomalous going on. And that is, well, I guess fucked up is the, really the only way to put it. But it's very easy to imagine that story playing out in the SCP universe. So you start to realize that just because the GOC is, you know, tactical and all these other things, they're also the tool of the state to preserve the state. And for some states, that might be good. I think in the grand scheme of things, it's better for there to be a United States, for example, than not to. But sometimes the state is oppressive, even in the United States, for example. Sometimes the state power is oppressive, and the GOC's job is to perpetuate that state power, no matter good, bad, and different. Like I said, the SCP Foundation does the same thing when they preserve the veil, but they're doing it incidentally. It's not their purpose. It is the GOC's purpose. Because they don't have the same research focus as the SCP Foundation. The SCP Foundation is like, protect normalcy, protect people, research anomalies. GOC is just protect anomalies and protect knowledge of anomalies from reaching the public. Research is not involved. And whereas the SCP Foundation has research at its foremost, foremost goal, GOC removes that entirely. And in almost every story I've ever read, their foremost goal is not necessarily even to protect people. Because they kill people a lot. Their goal is greater than that. It's a grander scope. It's remove knowledge of anomalies from the greater populace or keep it away from the greater populace. And it is, as I said, not very difficult to conflate anomalies and normalcy with the status quo of some very violent, dangerous, and politically, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, troublesome states. Anyway, that is it. <clears throat> I have a, a bit of a thing in my throat today. I was, if you notice, I was talking super fast. It's because I wanted to get through it as quickly as possible in case another coughing fit came along. You can probably hear it again. I keep getting like this. It's it's so annoying. I'm actually feeling a little e, eh, but uh, it, it's probably nothing. Probably. But if you enjoyed the video, Hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. I thought, you know, the intersection of politics and the SCP Foundation, everyone's like, SCP Foundation fiction isn't political. I'm like, well, yeah, it is. It's inherently political from the beginning because it supports authoritarianism. Not that, not that that's bad in fiction, by the way, but it is important for us to recognize that it's happening, at least. <laughs> it's like, that's your fictional world. Cool. But understand what your fictional world is about. And when someone's like, well, uh, you know, uh, out of character stuff that uh, goes against the, the, the spirit of the like the spirit of the foundation is bad. Is it, though? Because the spirit of the foundation is pretty fucked up. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I like the intersection of politics and fiction. And the SCP Foundation is a is a gold mine of that. You know, the people who founded the SCP Foundation. Uh, and, and if you look back at the people, this was like I said, it was 14, 15 years ago. Some of them were. Some of them turn out to be quite troublesome and problematic, we'll say that much. But, and some of those people have, some of those people have reformed since then, but their stuff's still, their old stuff's still up. But, uh, yeah, I thought I'd talk about this a little bit because it's something I wanted to talk, it's something I wanted to talk about. So fuck it, I'll talk about what I want to talk about. My channel, nobody's watching anyway anymore. <laughs> but if you were watching and you enjoyed it, Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then hit the, wait, no, not hit, head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsamarian like everybody here on the screen already has, including Sinjariki, who was pledged at $100, and MC Cashmill, who was pledged at $50. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here. And I will see you all again on Tuesday.